Hello all. Welcome to the first session of parallel programming. This is a professional elective subject and here in this today's session of parallel programming before going on to see the topic of parallel programming here we'll see what are the basic uh, objective of introdu introducing this particular course why is this particular course has been introduced for you people this particular course the main objective of this course is to make you understand the foundational concepts of parallel computing uh, you will be able to learn the different programming styles you will be learning CUDA programming so that you can uh, write an implementation for a parallel algorithm and uh, we'll even learn how the memory is being managed in CUDA CUDA here is nothing but compute unified device architecture we'll be dealing in detail when we are moving into the further topics and uh, how the kernel is being executed on CUDA I mean in CUDA on a GPU so uh, here uh, you have to be very much clear about the two terms here one till now we were using the execution process on a CPU which is central processing unit now we'll be using this parallel computing on a GPU which stands for graphical processing unit graphical processing unit now having seen the objectives you will be learning the course right so what will be the outcome of this particular course you will have an ability to implement parallel algorithms so for a given problem you will be able to solve it parallelly you will have the coding style that will end, uh, uh, give you the potential for vectorization you will be able to write the CUDA programs you will be able to efficiently utilize the memory and at last you will be able to analyze and implement the parallelism using kernel execution so these are the codes objectives and outcomes of this parallel programming so in order to achieve these codes outcomes we have to learn the syllabus right and the code syllabus as you all know is basically divided into five units in unit one uh, we'll be dealing with introduction to parallel computing where we learn about basics the fundamental laws and what are the approaches we'll be using and how do you judge the performance of an application and what are the parallel programming uh, algorithms and the patterns in unit 2 actually we enter into the programming part where first we'll see how we can achieve parallelism on a single cpu using message passing interface and in unit 3 now we'll see how the parallelism can be achieved on a gpu architecture so in first part we'll learn about gpu architecture and then we'll go for CUDA programming in the second part and continuation of your unit 3 in unit 4 will be seeing the various memories that are present on a GPU or you call it as CUDA memory management and what is the purpose of each and every memory and how do we go for performing uh, thread operations on a CUDA finally coming to unit 5 we'll see the kernel execution model what are the functions that are being implemented what are CUDA streams how you achieve parallelism and we'll see a sample problems of uh, prefix sum compact and split and quick sort and uh, when you go for the prescribed textbooks here parallel and high performance computing covers the total syllabus whereas if you want to go in depth of implementing parallel algorithms you can refer learn CUDA programming and this is by PACS publications now we actually enter into our topic now before we see the basics of parallel computing here we'll see what is a computing so what do you mean by a computing here uh, computing is nothing but the process of performing an operation so when you want to perform an operation we generally go for using a computer so why am i using a computer here it can be used for performing any part of your calculation it can be for storage of the data or it can be for uh, when I'm storing it can be either for retrieval of the data so you can either use it for calculation storage as well as retrieval of the data so when you see this computing now we'll go for seeing what are the various types of computing here as I told you computing is a process of performing some operation so these operations I can perform serially as well as parallelly right so when I call it as a serial computing so you will have only one CPU and you have a problem so though you have divided your problem into parts each of the part will be given to the cpu so after you execute this part then only the second part can be allotted to the cpu so it is in a sequential fashion one after the other and you have only one cpu 
Whereas when I go for parallel computing here, you have multiple CPUs, right? And your multiple problems which are divided into subparts and each of these problem can be solved by a different CPU. So this we call it as a parallel computing, but don't be in an illusion that I'll go for employing multiple CPUs. Here we go for using a GPU ins where this particular GPU will have multiple computing cores rather than calling it as multiple CPUs. We call it as multiple core and each core is capable of performing the operation. Now. Uh, you understood the difference between a serial and a parallel, right? Now, what do you will be frequently using a term concurrent? So, what do you mean by a concurrent execution? Now, as you will take some real time example where I have a vending machine for a co, right? And here I have two vending machines and they are two different queues. So, one queue is serviced by one vending machine, the other queue is serviced by other vending machine. So, this we call it as parallel. Whereas when I go for concurrent here, I have only one vending machine. So here there are two different queues, but the service is done alternatively. So one person from one queue, then the other person. So it doesn't mean both of them are being sim simultaneously serviced, but there is a time gap between one of them. Whereas here both of them are being serviced parallelly. So this Coke or a vending machine can be treated as a CPU, whereas it has a single CPU. Where we have multiple CPUs and these are two different. So this queue can be treated as problem one and problem two. This is problem one and problem two. So this is the difference between your concurrent versus parallel execution. So when you go for concurrent, it doesn't mean the problems are solved simultaneously. There will be a time gap between the solver between the solution provided to the problems. Now, having seen uh, the basic uh, difference between serial and uh, parallel computing and concurrent uh, computing. What is actually a parallel computing coming to the parallel computing? Parallel definition of a parallel computing. Parallel computing is a practice, right? Practice of what? So it is a practice of identifying and exposing parallelism. So you have to first identify where the parallelism has to exist in your algorithm, right? So once you identify it, you have to express this in our software. And once you have expressed this in the software, you have to understand the cost, the benefits and the limitations of your chosen implementation. So put together parallel computing is the practice of identifying and exposing parallelism in algorithms and expressing this in our software, comma, understanding the cost benefits and limitations of the chosen implementation. So you have to first identify, express this in your software. After you express, you to understand the benefits and then the limitations. So this is what a parallel computing means. Now, what are the benefits of parallel computing? So faster runtime. Faster runtime is nothing but it has less execution time. So the execution time, the time required for execution will be less. Why? Because you have more number of as i told you you have more number of computing units computing units which we call it as a core so each of the problem can be given to different codes p1 p2 and p3 so they go for so core here is nothing but a processor according to this which performs some processing so the problem can be divided into parts now if p is my problem i'm dividing it into three parts p1 p2 p3 which are being defined uh, divided given to three processes so ultimately you will have the less execution time larger problem size so by using parallel programming however how huge the problem may be you divide it into parts and each part you assign it to a particular computing unit or a core right and energy efficiency as you are seeing that as i'm saying that we are using multiple cores core or a processor here you may be thinking the energy consumption will also be more but here what we do is since we have a dynamic resource allocation depending upon my problem size i may not be using for example if my machine is of, of 12 codes i will not use all the 12 codes for every problem right depending on the problem size i may use all 12 codes or sometimes i may be using only nine codes so what will happen to the remaining three codes i'll switch them off so these more codes will not be operating so the energy consumed by it will not be energy consumption will not be there for this particular course so how do we actually calculate the energy consumption number of processes that are working 
what is the amount of energy it is taking and this is number of hours a processor is been used so this gives you the energy consumption so if the number of processor instead of 12 here if i go for only 9 so the energy consumption will also be less and the next advantage or a benefit is scalability so scalability here is nothing but you can add any number of uh, processors to the existing system so you can increase the scalability of the system uh, parallel computing can reduce cost it means uh, it means that as you increase the number of cores the cost uh, will be reduced it doesn't mean that the uh, cost of this particular core will be high when you compare it with your normal cpu coming to the applications having seen the basic definition and the benefits of parallel computing now we'll see what are the applications of it where do we actually go for using parallel computing nowadays they are being used in scientific applications big data processing weather forecasting video and image processing and financial modeling and let me tell you very clearly the main reason of implementing the gpu was uh, for your video and image processing so from here the graphical processing unit uh, we have entered into the world of parallel computing and this was initially a uh, winch initially of your gpu we were using a graphics card so where uh, way before the days uh, you were having only a laptop without a graphic card uh, those who were doing civil uh, and mechanical engineering because of their cad lab only those uh, people used to have a graphic card but nowadays it is a built-in uh, along with your system which you are getting it so the reason behind this gpu implementation for was video and image processing now having seen the application we will see how the parallel computing works so when you want to know how the parallel computing works you know the various layers of uh, your uh, system right we will be at the hardware you have your operating system compiler so the user will generally interact with the software layer he gives a program the compiler will convert into a language which your operating system can understand it pro gives it to the corresponding hardware and finally you get your output now we'll see how this parallel computing works but as a developer i am only interested of writing a program which will be given to the application layer and later uh, remaining all the things are to be managed by your system now in order to achieve this so as you all know when i say a system it is not just a software it is a combination of your hardware and the software so you when you want this hardware device to work you want a corresponding software so whenever you want to build a parallel system also you will need to have hardware models as well as your software models so when i go for hardware models you have distributed memory architecture shared vector unit and auxiliary now coming to distributed memory architecture as you can see you have multiple cpus and each cpu will have its own memory so each has a capability of storing the data and performing the operations and they can transfer the data over the network and this shared distributed architecture you can even call it as cross node cross node in the sense if this particular cpu requires the data present in this particular cpu it can use this network and get the data so that's the reason you call it as cross node and we have another architecture here which we call it a shared memory architecture where in shared memory architecture you have only one memory multiple cpus will be using it so you call it as on node on node means both of them will be using the same memory and the next hardware model here is nothing but your vector unit so in the vector unit you have multiple operations for example i want to add two arrays which are of size 4 so what is the operation i want to do here a1 plus a2 since the operation is same you can go for using a device which is a vector unit which performs the operation simultaneously and we have another one here another uh, hardware model which is a special processor so the special processor here is nothing but a gpu that gpu can be present within the cpu or it can be attached separately to the gpu so if it is present internally we call it as integrated if it is separate we call it as discrete and you can even go for implementing a parallel architecture where you can combine both of them so this is your special processor all the architectures whatever we have seen we are just combining them so when you see this this become network shared so this becomes your uh, distributed single alone becomes your shared and these are your special so all of them can be integrated into a single 
parallel architecture model. And coming to the software model, we have process based, thread based, and vectorization and streaming process. So, if you want a distributed system to work, so what is that we were doing that they uh, go for communicating over the network? So, what is that we are doing using message passing? So, process based parallelism is used for the hardware model, which is nothing but distributed. So, here when you see this, uh, you have your application where you have your process. And it is in turn divided into multiple process and the operating system will decide which process to execute on which particular core. And finally, it is being executed and data is being stored on the system. Thread based parallelism. So we have a hardware model which is known as shared uh, uh, memory architecture or shared data architecture. So here in that we go for thread based parallelism where your process will be divided into multiple threads and each of these threads will be assigned to a core by the operating system. So each you try to relate each software model with the hardware. Now vectorization. So what is vectorization? Vectorization is a process of performing the same operation. It is SIMD single instruction multiple data single instruction in the sense if I write A of a uh, a, a is an array and B is an array. If I write A plus B, so plus operation is uh, assume A is of size 4 values and B is of size 4 values, and you are performing the operation simultaneously. And for that, you require a software that we call it as a vectorization. We go for using pragmas. And finally, as I told you, when you go for your uh, specialized processor in case of the hardware model, here we call it as stream processing. What do you mean by a stream here? Stream here is nothing but flow of data, continuous flow of data. So when you go for this continuous flow of data here, we go for using a specialized processor that is nothing but a GPU to perform the operation. So it takes the data, performs the operation and gives back the data. So this is a continuous form of performing the operations. We'll be seeing the next topics in the next class.